Hey everybody, welcome to uh, how Kanban meets the US Agile, USDS Agile Playbook. Uh, welcome to everybody, this interagency briefing today. And with us today, we have uh, our guest star. Our star guy is, is Joey Spooner, the guy in the middle. He's the technical lead who's joining us from, from Florida. But also with us, we have Randy Williams. Say hey, Randy. Hey, good morning, everybody. That's right. Say hey, hey Joey, from, from Sunshine Land. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Yeah, I, I just came back from Fort Lauderdale, so it was great. I enjoyed it. I'm Dave Law. I'm your briefing host. And we want to welcome everybody that's coming in today. Uh, if we missed your agency, apologize for that. We try to grab as many as we can to make sure that uh, that we welcome everyone. But welcome here today. We're glad that you decided to join us. And real quick, this event is not affiliated or endorsed by any agency and is provided to you, the audience, for informational purposes only. And participation in this briefing is voluntary and any engagement by government personnel is not an indication or endorsement of or commitment to purchase from any vendor. Got that. Out. All right. Very Brilliant. good. A couple of little quick things about the briefing. If you have any questions, open up the panel and you can enter those and we'll do our best to get that back to you. If you joined us and you'd like to dialogue, you can raise your hand and we can create that dialogue so we can go back and forth. And if you dialed in on the phone, very, very important, use your audio pin. It's pound your audio pin number and then pound again so we can unmute you. And if you have any questions throughout this, we'll be collecting these as well at, at GovSupport at TritechEnterprise.com, and we will do our best to get those answered for you. Uh, one final thing, if you like the way that Joey looks down in Florida, you can get make him bigger by dragging that little, little uh, panel um, separator, and you can make it large. And with that, that's all that I have to get us started, and we have a lot to do today, so I want to make sure we're on track. Why are you guys here? Uh, we'll be doing this a couple of times throughout this. You want to learn more about the executive orders that have come out last year. I want to learn more about the USDS playbook, if you're not already familiar with that. I want to learn about Kanban management. You can you can select as many as you like. Or you want to learn about the DOL case study that we're going to be doing today. And you can go ahead and answer those. And, and we will absolutely make sure we get the right information to you as a result. And with that, we're going to leave you... Another five, four, three, two, one, and thank you very much. Awesome. Just real quick, everybody. All right. We want to learn about the initiatives. Gotcha. Uh, and the playbook, even up. And then uh, about Kanban management. Glad that you're all here because that's actually what we're going to be talking about. Right, fellas? That's right. That's right. Excellent. So my, my, and my screen is moving, right? You're seeing everything move. All right. Good. Just making sure. So today we're going to, we already did the welcome, but we'll give you a quick overview of TriTech and, and what they do uh, from the industry perspective. We'll talk about some of the initiatives that are coming down on everybody's head and the USDS playbook, get to that DOL case study that folks are interested in, and we'll get to some Q&A from you as well and procurement and funding options, and then we'll, we'll close you guys out. So Randy, you established... Tried tech in 2002. Why? What? Did, what? What made motivated you to do such a thing? Well, actually, uh, Dave. Uh, thanks. Good morning. I did that for several reasons. I worked for uh, a contractor, uh, SRA, and I actually left them when they went uh, public. Started my own firm. Uh, I felt that uh, working under them, I learned a lot. But with Tried Tech, I had the opportunity to uh, teach others better and save them money and get right down to the detailed solution that they wanted. Uh, so over the last 16 years, uh, TriTech has been doing uh, integration work, as well as now we're in Agile methodology and some security work. But most of all, you know, we're a CMM level three company now. We are still on the SBA as a, uh, still an SBA, we're a HubZone company, we have a JSA schedule, and every single customer that we supported since 2002 is still on board with us. So that proves that we are actually uh, doing what the customer needs. Your success is our priority. That is excellent. And congratulations on that. That is an accomplishment that very few people can even think about, right? So, That's correct. Um, and we, we appreciate you guys being here and being able to share this information because there are multiple things that are coming down on folks in, in the federal government, whether it's procurement or program side. So, we'll get into some of those things. And we do know that one of them is 
are, are the, the presidential memorandums that we see, right? So, we talk, you know, hiring freeze, no news, right? There's That's still in place in most agencies. Then we have the, re, the reorg from March 13th of last year, and then April 12th, M1722, getting to the place where we're really looking to manage the government more streamlined and, uh, and ultimately doing more with less, which gets us to that, those initiatives. As, and this is what applies very well to the Agile methodology, as, as well as what U.S. Uh, digital services has been doing with, with, uh, with any of the advancements that they're putting forth. But Agile is a big part of that. So we'll get to that. But maximizing employee performance, no, nothing new here uh, since that. And, and again, doing more with less. That's what we're up against. So as far as the USDS playbook is concerned, though, let's find out how many people really know about this. If, if, or if this is just coming from, from someplace uh, and, that, and that this is one of your first exposures to the USDS playbook. Um, we'll be talking about this uh, pretty much throughout the whole the whole presentation right fellas that's right yep so with that and we have most most are not familiar with the usds playbook which is really interesting so let's uh you have another five four three two one and great thank you very much that was that was a great poll uh look at that guys look at wow <laughs> so, uh, we will we learn about it today. So awesome. So we're really glad that you're here and we'll get right to it. So what is USDS? US Digital Services was established in 2014. Uh, I actually met with Steve Van Rokel. He was the original US CIO who brought this program forward. Uh, originally, they just wanted to have 10 people to help come in and fix some of the biggest issues that were out there with, with immigration management, VA benefits, and healthcare.gov. If you remember, that was a huge burning issue and, and that needed to be corrected. And they wanted to hire 10 people and they were pulling from industry talent and they still do, by the way. It's, it's the Googles, the Facebooks and folks like that, really um, highly, highly skilled uh, folks that are, that are on these teams, which are USDS digital teams. And they come in SWAT teams, target teams, whatever you want to call these folks, come in to address critical agency IT issues, and they follow the USDS playbook. They created it and followed it. We'll get you a link to that as well. Uh, but it's it's designed to accelerate the development of existing or current projects to get them through so that you're actually using them, right? We'll talk about that too, won't we, Joey? That's right. That's and, right. And also turn around projects that aren't running the way that they're supposed to be. Uh, and now USDS and Tony Scott, a friend of mine, um, I talked with him just the other day. Uh, that blew up to over 200 plus USDS members. So they wanted only 10. They got the over 200 plus. And now uh, Margie Graves is is running uh, USDS. And um, I got to spend several hours with her down in Austin a few a couple of years ago. So all of them highly qualified folks, very good at what they do. And you have access to them from um, from uh, your agency as well. So. Let's talk about what they're talking about with USDS and what they use, which is Agile. Tell us about Agile and how this kind of this this mindset got running, guys. Yeah, thanks, Dave. So Agile kind of started back in manufacturing way back in 1980. So let's call that a long time ago for the fun <laughs> of it. But uh, <laughs> it wow. did take place. Yeah, and mostly in manufacturing uh, facilities. It was the idea of incrementally delivering work. Uh, it actually moved into project management. Uh, around 2001 with the start of the Agile Manifesto and many software development managers were starting to use these inter iterative and incremental approaches to managing work because they found that would create a lot of flexibility for them. It's been picked up a lot in the late uh, past 10 years, 15 years now, and it's actually in the past four to five years, maybe four, it's been moving into non-IT areas, marketing, advertising, human resources, legal services. I, I I'm at a conference this week, actually, and a lot of people are talking about non-IT Agile. Mm. What does this mean? It means getting feedback a little faster. It means you're getting your information and making decisions in a faster way and not uh, letting delay get the better of you. Excellent. And there's different flavors, right? Because there's, there's safe, there's scrum, all these terms that, that you'll wind up hearing with Agile. Tell us what they are and what we're going to concentrate on today. Yeah, sure. So 
th these are just a handful of flavors here. If you Google Agile and you look up Wikipedia, you'll see this gigantic laundry list of amazing different ways to do Agile. There is no one right way to do it. Uh, it's more about what fits for you. But we have things like SAFE that you see in the government today, uh, Scrum, which is a very popular one. You hear the word Sprint being used a lot. And also DevOps, which actually takes in the automation components and really makes things move a lot smoother. Uh, for us, we've been really having good luck and good fortune with uh, the Kanban method. Uh, but remember, there's no one right way to do that. So if someone says, this is the way you need to do it, uh, they probably don't understand your situation. And your situation is really what's fit for purpose. So we tend to look at what your fitness criteria are for your service or for your organization or your program. And then we build back against that with your service delivery. And that's kind of what I think the Kanban method does. So, and, and it is working, right? Because to your point, you mentioned yeah. it, moving quickly, being able to get things going a lot faster, buy-in throughout the organization and such, right? That's right, that's right. So typically it allows you to uh, move in smaller bits and get feedback faster, which is really important because sometimes, a lot of the time, you're kind of guessing what you think is the right thing that you're going to do. Whether that's technology or non-technology, you're taking a guess and you wanna get some feedback soon. And the idea that we focus on is making sure that you're doing the right thing consistently and then getting that feedback a little sooner. So the idea is that you wanna learn what works and doesn't work. Now, one of the key things that's come out of the Agile movement, which I'm really happy about, is the idea of not grinding yourself to, you know, into dust, basically, by working long hours. So we try to do this under conditions that are what I refer to as humane, right? Eight hours a day, 10 hours a day at most, that's kind of the high end of it, but really about eight hours a day of good focused work and then coming back again. Something that we've been teaching people is that not every day is an eight or a 10. So some days you roll a 10, some days you roll a five, some days you roll a three, and that's the randomness in life. And we have to make sure we put that into account with everything else that takes place. That's that's a really interesting point because we're not always operating 100%. That's right, we're not machines. And in and, and the classic project management model, it was more like you're 100% utilized or you're not. And now we're looking at it more like, how can you help contribute to the delivery of value? And that's a fantastic, that's a fantastic outlook. Awesome, so we have actually a case study with Department of Labor uh, with public affairs and this particular program that you were involved in uh, is 30 million dollar uh, portfolio that and there were some there were some issues so tell us about this kind of set the stage and then we'll talk a little bit about how you guys went about uh, getting to where you went and and what the results were sure yeah so when i got there the team was trying to use scrum uh but they were having a little bit of a hard time and it was just the development team so the QA team and the security team really didn't follow the Scrum approach. Uh, so what we decided to do was to just visualize their work, tie it together, and then have them try to use Scrum as a whole team. They were able to successfully do that for about 13 sprints and then decided, you know what, we'd like to try something a little different. We're tired of doing this three week you know, run to the finish line. Uh, we wanna try something a little smoother. Mm. So they actually decided to go with the Kanban method and that actually allowed them to uh, monitor, measure, and remove a lot of delay in their process. Uh, and ultimately what happened was we removed the time frame from delivering software from 55 days to 11 days. So for those of the agile, those agile folks that are on the line right now, take a user story, it would take 55 days. Now it took 11 days to deliver a user story. For some of those in the industry, they might say, well, that could be a little faster. And I agree with them. But remember, we're using old technology. Uh, we don't have everything we need to do it in place. Uh, so, for example, test-driven development was something they wanted to do, tried to do, couldn't get it done. So it was a very uh, low maturity team that was growing into higher maturity. And that was something we really enjoyed about the method. We also used uh, Portfolio Kanban. That was something that I didn't pick up. The manager around me picked up. He said, I like this visualization thing. I wanna visualize the entire portfolio to the team and also have discussions around risk management of that portfolio. Uh, ultimately, we ended up training more of the federal staff on Kanban and how to use it. Mm -hmm. And uh, now it's been doing great. And in fact, we used it uh, a while ago for the governance and IT security team which had no clue how to do Agile at all. And they hired one additional person and ultimately improved their performance by 90%. That was something for like 55 days for them to deliver um, something like a audit report or an entry or a security evaluation on software. That went down to five days in about four and a half months, maybe six months at most. So we've had some really good luck there with the Department of Labor in improving their performance without causing any more cost. And keep in mind too, Dave, one thing that happens a lot uh, frameworks that you see in the Agile methodologies out there, they're typically recipes you want to apply. And a lot of people will apply them very strictly as if you've got to do it or you're not doing it at all. Uh, with the Kanban method, 
it is we start with what you do now and we slowly pick apart the places where there are obvious wins for everybody and no one feels this dramatic shift and change they feel like you're just slowly improving and there's a lot of good morality uh, morale that comes out of that positive morale and a momentum in the right direction for improving everybody uh, skill level and the service I love I love the quick win analogy as well because it, it's it gets you buy-in um, with folks when you see the when you see the quick wins it makes you trust the the process if you will um, mm -hmm. so let's talk about some of the problems that you ran into or what, what was happening you mentioned a little bit about about that already but talk about what was happening in Department of Labor yeah so day one we had no visualization of the work so the federal manager I was working with said hey can you help me see into the work because I don't know what these guys are doing around me I sit on the same floor with I see them typing away at their computers and I get a status report at the end of the week if I'm lucky. Sometimes it takes until the next week to get that status report. So his feedback loop was five to seven business days. Mm -hmm. We took that and made it day of. So each day around 10 o'clock, we would get together around this visualization and we would actually um, take care of, uh, sorry, visualizing. <laughs> sorry yeah. about that. <laughs> this is a shared office space I'm in right now, so my apologies. <laughs> um, so we were trying to visualize what was going on during the day, the work that was being brought to delivery. So these were the user stories. We also looked at how long it would take for work to complete once the team starts on the story. So we actually were able to start tracking the, the time range in which work would happen. So we learned what it would take to really get something done. Once we realized our system, which is really a, a good thing that we do in Kanban, we could actually start to understand what a feature or project would take in terms of the number of stories. Uh, there's a forecasting method we use in the Kanban method, which has been really useful. And then also, we also, he wanted to know how can I, the ultimate question typically that managers have, how do I tell my manager above me that I've got a ton of stuff on my plate and you're piling a dump truck, you know, worth of stuff on my plate. And I, I appreciate that. I want to help you get it all done. But, you know, there's this pile of stuff you want me to do. And here's about how much I can get done. Here's my pipeline for getting it done. So we actually were able to visualize that and re respond to that in a way that's, that was quantified. So both sides had a clear picture of, okay, this is the truth. This is our capability as a team, and here's our demand. And then lastly, one of the things that he wanted to have uh, sort of resolved was, QA was 300 feet away or less from the developers, but they rarely talked together at the same time. Putting them together in the same visualization allowed them to have conversations every day about what was in progress and what needed to be resolved. Imagine that, you start communicating and things kind of work out. Right. A yep. bit better. As long as you're not throwing stuff on your community. <laughs> so the solution is that you mentioned this already. You you yep. applied the Kanban method progressively. So it wasn't like, bam, you got to do all this all at one time. But you, right. you picked the low hanging fruit or did the quick wins. Right. That's right. That's right. I the If anyone's listening and you want to try something that is Kanban related, my first belief is that you follow that very beginning principle of the method, which is start with what you do now. Don't change anything. Don't change any roles. Just visualize it on a whiteboard. You could use uh, technology to do this as well. But when you do that, that allows you to have a conversation that's between you and the team about something that matters to both of you. And it really allows a progressive conversation to take place over time. Uh, for us, we started with just simple visualization. How do you do it? What are you doing? And then we slowly grew into, okay, how well is it really working? What are the metrics behind that? And we're talking very simple metrics. So if you think you got to calculate and compute, uh, compute a lot of information, it's really simple. Mm. Track when you started it, track when you finished it, and you're going to get a ton of information out of that uh, way of tracking your metrics. Um, and the guy who actually walked in was a specialist in metrics that I refer to often, uh, a guy named Daniel Vacanti, actually. <laughs> he's on site today with me, and he's really good at, at crunching those numbers, and he's taught me a lot as well. And this has been something that we used at the Department of Labor to get those forecasts done. So we actually were able to determine, are we stable in our process after doing this Kanban method? And then how do we actually start to forecast out what the future looks like? And let's talk about the results and just reiterate what you said earlier, that 80% uh, improvement in performance is, that is staggering. Yeah, and keep in mind, folks, this is not a, a light switch experience. It is something where you have to learn. You have to figure out where the bugs are in your process and you have to figure out what do you need to do to improve that? So that was over a two year period that we figured out how to bring that down from 55 days to 11 days. While at the same time, improving the skills of the team, uh, that was something that happened in the background. At the same time, we also had this awareness of how to be balanced, how to do our work in a balanced way, not overcommit to too many things, not undercommit, 
to too few things. That allowed us to be more predictable over time. And so we could answer the question of when, it, when will it be done really reliably. In fact, one time I remember I was in a meeting with um, this federal manager I was working with, and he was you know, passionate about this project with his peers. And he said, guys, we're gonna try and make this happen in 30 days for you. And I did a rough estimate of how many stories might be in this project. I, I took a pretty good educated guess. And I calculated it using a forecasting tool that we use for all of our uh, predictability work. And it said 90 days. And he said, no, 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 this is, I'm passionate about it. We're all passionate about it. We're gonna get this done in 30 days. 90 days later, about 90 days later, we released that software. And I turned my laptop around with that analysis and I said, remember when I said 90 days? It was about two or three days off from that actual uh, predictability. So that was really good and really positive for him in terms of confidence in the way we were doing things with this approach. That's great. And because it, it, it's being real about things too. It's not just saying, hey, let's let's make this unrealistic expectation. He had a full belief that, it, that he'd be able to do that because of the buy-in that he, he had. He just wasn't managing the throughput sounds like to me, uh, or understanding the throughput in order to get to that goal. And uh, yeah. and even though that was a negative, you turn that into a positive form, which is, that's that's an art in and of itself, by the way, Joey. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Dave. Uh, so great, great recap there. We'll take some questions on, uh, on the DOL case study in just a minute. I, I see some questions about it, so we'll, we'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, but the other thing we want to do is we want to tie this into what the, the USDS playbook says about bringing, bringing these projects to fruition. And one of those, if you look at bullet point number four, build the service using agile and iterative practices. A lot of this is all wrapped and woven into the USDS playbook from the beginning, right? So, so yeah. let's talk about, you know, in retrospect, how the DOL success or at least the process and where they are in, in it. So understand what people need. How does it apply? Yeah, so in that case, uh, it took us about, honestly, it took us about a year to recognize this. We knew we needed to do it, but we didn't have the right organization to do it initially. Mm. Um, so as we got into doing some of our work, we had the federal manager act as a UAT specialist. He would actually come back through and validate a lot of the work that we did. Kind of like what you do in the Scrum uh, framework. But the problem was uh, we felt like we were missing the mark with him. He kept saying, guys, you're not quite there. You got to go back and rework this. And that feedback that happened over the course of maybe two weeks to five days, depending on what the work was, we realized we needed to create something that would allow us to break that work down. So we created an, what's called an upstream Kanban, which allows us to really break down those requirements. Uh, now, unfortunately, because of where we were within the Department of Labor, we couldn't go straight to a citizen or a customer, but we would pick out random people and ask them you know, to test something out. So that allowed us to get a better sense of suitability. Now, that isn't complete needs analysis where the geeks out there, it's not 100%, but that started them down that road, which is a new door that they opened up there. Um, so Dave, the, uh, the addressing the whole experience from start to finish, we, uh, we did something along the lines of focusing on core priorities. So we didn't have a chance to get into all the experience aspects, but we were starting to develop our way there. Uh, and as far as making it simple and intuitive, uh, using that Kanban system, we had a better feedback loop, like I said, on the requirements. We knew we had to build that upstream system suddenly and do that work. And one of the things we learned along the way was that you know, the skill level of our team isn't superb. They're good, but they're not great. They're not the superstars that you have in the industry. They're starting out, they're working their way up the ladder. So we realized we had to break down those requirements into small, small pieces, and that made it easier for them to digest. Uh, we also worked on building the service using the agile and iterative processes. So in this case, you guys remember we did Scrum to begin with, then we moved into Kanban. And Kanban really helped us to understand the risk management around what we were doing. It allowed us to understand if something was, you know, we needed to do it today, or if we needed to do it maybe by a certain date, or maybe in like two weeks or so. So we actually had to support a lot of different kinds of requests. Requests from internal agencies, requests from other departments at times, and requests from the, the White House, the executive branch. So we wanted to make sure that we supported all those initiatives in a very mindful way without over committing ourselves and getting in a bad place, mm. uh, without pinning ourselves into a corner really. Um, in terms of structuring budgets and contracts, I think they were on their way when we left uh, with DOL. We actually had a very good experience with them where they understood how to deliver things and manage the performance on a delivery perspective. That means for the folks here on the, on the call, that means measuring how much you deliver per quarter or making your objectives per quarter. 
that's really what this was about ultimately, making sure we were predictable and making that consistent over time, if not improving it. Um, assigning one leader and holding that person accountable, I was very fortunate. Uh, the team at DOL had this really great manager uh, who was focused on getting this through. He had such good leadership skills and he was really focused on making sure we had our conversations that were tough and bringing, our way, bringing ourselves to a, an accountable point of view where we actually all work together. Uh, in terms of experienced teams, like I said, we had experienced teams, but we didn't have the best in the industry. And that's for, I think, a lot of people. So we started with where we were. We did a good, very good skills assessment and we understood how to cross train each other and slowly build our skills up as a good team. We didn't have the fortune of a good modern technology stack. I don't want to say this is Department of Labor like other citizen-based uh, departments, but this was one of those things where they couldn't afford every great thing. They were able to afford some of these things. So we were able to improve performance while working with the existing technology we had in place. In terms of deploying in a flexible hosting environment, we were on our way there, but we didn't have all the things that we were looking for. Uh, we used something called uh, Bifrid. Some of those in the federal government might know about it. Uh, it worked well for our needs, but we couldn't do the really great automated things that come out of that. And that leads us to automated testing and deployments. We had some of this. Uh, and like I said, we tried to do TDD, which is test-driven development, but we couldn't completely execute it. That was our current reality. That was our current capability. And I think that's a tough conversation to have, but it really illustrates the picture for everyone in the room. This is what we have right now, and this is how much demand we have. How do we balance that out is what we talk about frequently. Uh, and then managing security and privacy through the reusable processes. Now that's where we had this in great form, in great shape. We knew exactly what we needed to do to make sure that we were auditable, that we were in compliance with regulatory requirements within the federal government, and we had a way to improve it slowly and surely. On top of that, we actually realized that this was complex stuff. You know, some of these things are very agile and tempor temporary, and we want to give it a try and see if it sticks. What stuck became what we called a service guidebook. We created a little reference guidebook for people to say, okay, how do you do this? What are the steps we need to do to go through to make sure we're compliant? And that came, became a good reference book for people who came on board as well as people who were there for a while and needed to brush up on what was going on as far as the process is concerned. We used a lot of data to drive our decisions. Now, we would have loved to have done that for the product, for the customers. We didn't have that technology in place. That was the reality of our demand that we were trying to supply and I mean, support. So ultimately, we worked on looking at our metrics every two weeks of our performance as a team. We tried to get more lean in what we were doing. We tried to remove anything that wasn't really adding value at the time. So we really focused on making sure that the customers had something that would come back quickly. Our customers, in our case, were the government agencies uh, and other departments like the White House. It's worth mentioning, Kanban method visualizes all of this. So the metrics are there, they're visualized, you see them very clearly. You can see if you're going in a good direction, way ahead of schedule, or if you need to correct and get back into process in a good way where you're actually more predictable over time. Uh, and then defaulting to open. One of our key projects was actually delivering an open source project uh, called Quarry, and that was meeting the goal of OMB 1313, which was the open data initiative by the Obama administration. And we used the Kanban method to realize this project and deliver it on time while improving our performance. And that's probably worth saying one more time. We delivered the project on time, and at the same time, we were improving our performance. That, to me, is kind of bananas crazy. Imagine saying we're going to make our, our date, and at the same time, we're also going to improve how we're working. I don't know too many teams that would take that on. And we didn't say that outright. It just happened naturally because we were using that method to slowly, incrementally improve the way we worked. And I think, to your point, that that's really what you want it to turn out is that not everybody is like striving for this per perfect outcome. It is understanding where you are, moving from where you are into a better managed environment. And, uh, and, and great job, by the way, all 13 points covered. And uh, while, and I think it was great that not all of them are hundred percent either. It's not like it all works out hundred percent all the time, but the idea is that, and that's what makes the, the playbook. So, so, Incremental, instrumental, sorry, in the in the process itself is being able to say, hey, are we meeting those objectives and being able to map that out? And you mentioned uh, OMB 1313, right? Yes. Well, this also applies being able to follow the playbook as well as, as implement Agile in your organization applies to M1722 as well. And it's essentially doing more with less. That's what the requirement is, is becoming. Uh, there's no super load of 
of contracting officers coming on board. So everybody's being required to, con to, to do more with less and with the retirement of, uh, of folks and, and, and people leaving, it's, it's tough to hire people, right? So uh, just, to, just in a replacement mode, it's very difficult. So again, uh, meets the M1720, 1722 as well. So now we'll get to some questions. So you can open your panel on the right-hand side. You can raise your hand. You can type those questions in, uh, or you can email them to, to us at govsupport at tritechenterprise.com. Down the bottom, you can see that. So, all right, let me uh, get my spectacles on, and I'll, I'll take a look at what people are asking us. Hang on one second, and I will get to it. Um, you mentioned this, but this came in earlier. Was Kanban methodology used in DOL's project? And the answer is yes, right? Yeah, yeah, actually it was. And in fact, this is a very common pattern I see right now in the federal government where they have to utilize the PMP to report on the metrics of the project back up to OMB or other organizations. But within the PMP, they get to choose what they want to use for the delivery method. And they use Kanban for the delivery method after about a year of using Scrum. Uh, the team got tired of using Scrum because they got tired of running those sprints uh, and just kind of rushing, rushing, rushing. They felt like it was pressuring them too much. Instead, they switched from the push, met, push kind of approach of Scrum to a pull approach of the Kanban method where they pulled in new work when they had capacity to do that. And what does PMP stand for, just so for everybody? Yeah, that, that's the Project Management uh, Professional designation, or okay. PMI is the organization, Project Management Institute. Gotcha. Um, and, one, and the next question is, how can we get buy-in throughout the organization? You mentioned it before that sometimes folks are trying to get buy-in of their superiors that they have a work workload um, limitation, you know, and then otherwise management's trying to get buy-in from everybody throughout to, to get there. So how do you do that? Yeah, so there, there are a couple of ways to do that. Um, the, the one that I think is the best in terms of culture for the organization is find the place that's not doing good at all. People have tried to get it to work. They've tried to get this little division to work, for example, or this team to work. They can't seem to get them to function well. If you apply the Kanban method there, that could be a very good case study internally for your organization to see exactly how it can work. And sometimes you'll see results showing up as early as six weeks, and you'll see improvements uh, within a six-month time frame very easily. So it's, it's possible to do this. Uh, I usually tell people, give me your ugliest, give me your worst, give me your bad, you know, Be situation. Careful. Be careful. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I love those because those are really fun problems to turn around. And I find that the Kanban method illustrates very quickly how that can happen. Uh, how the other higher performing teams will, will like it, but they may not see the immediate benefits that you would see with a, a poor performing team. Um, but then again, if you're trying to say, how do I get buy-in across the organization? Um, sometimes, and, and this is something that I'm glad we're, we're here talking about it today, I think not enough people are talking about it throughout the U.S. government. I think they're doing it quietly and they're having some success, but there should be a broader conversation around that because uh, typically buy-in happens by looking at your peers and they say, holy cow, that wasn't too hard to do and that was something that worked well and it didn't cause a dramatic shift and change with the organization. It was slow, it was evolutionary. So um, I think in some ways if you can uh, have teams come together and talk about it for an hour or two or a day, that can really change perspectives. We have ways of doing that through uh, simulations here at TriTech. Awesome. Uh, what are, Reed asked a question, what are some primary differences between Kanban and Scrum? Great question. Yeah, good, good question. So, so Scrum typically works on the idea that you're wanting to set up a time frame in which you execute your work. And the idea is that your team's supposed to estimate how much they can do and then try to deliver that with some level of accuracy. Uh, we talked about user stories before. Think of these as tasks. You know, if you haven't done anything the Agile before, these are the tasks that you're trying to achieve within a given two to three week period. Mm -hmm. And the idea is the team is committing early on to doing that work. And in the most ideal circumstances, they're saying, once we commit to doing this work, we can't allow anything else to come into our process. You know, we can't allow new work to come in. Uh, so they start to do that work, and the idea is they burn down that entire backlog of work within a two or three week period. Some teams can do it within a couple of days. It just depends on their way of working. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas the Kanban method, it's more about pulling in work and organizing it, making sure you understand the demand for what it really is. Uh, you have conversations on the front end, making sure that what's being asked of you is appropriately evaluated for the, the true need, the risk involved. Wow. On the delivery end, we make sure that we pull in work 
according to risk. So we have things that sometimes happen day off. You've got to get it fixed. It's a bug or it's something else in terms of the world, you know, like a, a last minute high priority request to update something. Whereas other cases we'll have things that are due on a certain date. Sometimes we have things that are due like, you know, in two or four weeks. And we pull that work in and we manage our workload that way. So we never really stop working, but we have points in time in which we reflect on our work. The idea between Scrum and, and Kanban probably is this idea of commitment in a batch model versus Kanban, which is commitment at the item level or the individual level. Mm -hmm. We're continuously flowing work through a Kanban system, which allows us to really reflect on our efficiency with reality. Whereas in a Scrum situation, it's great for building products. It's really great for, for doing things in a very intensely focused way, but that means that nothing else can break that focus. We tend to work on balancing focus with reality in a Kanban system. So, and like you said in the beginning, there is no right or wrong. Uh, there's just, right. in, 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 and that's what, uh, I think that makes it comfortable for a lot of people to adopt if, if it, you become across saying, hey, you're, you're wrong, this is wrong, you've been doing it wrong, and you've been running the wrong way. And mm -hmm. instead, you, you adopt where you are, don't change, don't change anything. Just apply a couple of these these tools. And one of those tools, uh, use of an uh, Tim is asking use use of an estimation tool was stated earlier on. Would you mind stating what that tool is? I've seen many homegrown tools, but curious if there's something else out there. So lay it on out. Yeah, I will. The gentleman who walked in here and crashed this webinar about, I don't know, 30 minutes ago. I can't wait to get him for this. But he is the, the guy who created something called Actual Agile Analytics. Uh, he's written a book on it that talks about how to look at it, either from a Scrum or from a Kanban perspective. He's the one who actually makes it very clear to you how you can do a start and end date and get a lot of information out of that. Mm -hmm. And he also has a tool uh, which is web-based that will do all the metrics and analysis for you. And it'll actually, it'll actually tell you uh, the stability of your process. So oftentimes we do something in the Kanban method called a service delivery review. And within that context of about a 45, maybe 30 minute period, we look at different aspects of the system using that tool. And one thing that that tool has is a dashboard. And that dashboard, it actually really indicates clearly to us if we're, on pro if we're balanced and stable or if we need to calibrate something. Hmm. It really allows for a good, quick, what I call family photo of your team. It allows you to see what's changed in the past two weeks and really help you figure out where you need to go next. Uh, some teams, like the company that I'm sitting in right now today here in Fort Lauderdale, they refresh their data every 15 minutes using this tool. So they look at things, uh, they don't look at it critically every 15 minutes, but they will come by uh, maybe every 45 minutes, maybe every two hours and see what's happened since the next story was delivered. This really gives a good forecast for the future for them. That's great, great. There he is, hey Dan, say hello Dan. <laughs> there he is again, is that him again? That's him again, <laughs> he had to grab his bag. Sorry about that. Almost on cue, man, if he'd have popped over that door, <laughs> When you were talking about them, that have been even better. But, uh, but that's great, and and uh, you can see it in action. All right, so um, and we will take any more questions that you want want to provide us. That's great, and we will we'll answer those as we go. Uh, let's talk about a pilot program because this is one of the the questions that have come out of of talking with so many folks that would like to try it to see if there's a way for the methodology to work without dumping in an entire new program and make it very difficult. Uh, so this is five to six weeks, you say, is how it works. And so it, it falls under the simplified acquisition threshold. So that's a good thing too. Um, they can check a couple of boxes and we'll talk about that in a minute, but talk about what the objective is of the pilot and then how that may roll into something uh, that would be more broad. Yeah. So um, in this case, what we're looking at is about maybe five to six weeks of time spent training people on what the method is. It doesn't take long to train them on it. And also mapping out what they currently do and making sure they can visualize that very easily. And then from there, helping them to quickly identify some quick wins. It doesn't take long. Like I said, about five to six weeks of tracking information is enough to give you a lot to understand how to improve things and get some immediate benefits. Uh, and the idea here is eventually you wanna do more with less. In some cases, you've gotta do it. In some cases, it's actually helpful to do it. Why is that the case? It allows you to focus and get better quality. You have better intent. You know, everyone wants to meet the spirit of their mission. This kind of allows you a little room to do that mm. and talk about it in a way that's effective with your management. So they don't feel like you're not doing work. They understand what you're trying to do. It creates this amazing dialogue. There have been many times in the past 15 years of my career where I've had conflict situations with two employees. And they keep arguing about, 
you know, uh, the hair color or the, the color of their shirt, you know, and they're like, you don't do this right. You don't do this right. And what I've learned is, as a technique, is to put an object in between them. And this visualization of this Kanban method really allows that conversation to happen between a manager and a, a, another employee or between two managers. So this only, that happens probably within about three hours, honestly, of the pilot. We visualize it very quickly. It doesn't take long to put that together. And then from there, understand where you currently are within your metrics. Uh, we use a lot of, you know, uh, quick ways to do the metrics, but sometimes it can take a little bit longer to figure out where you've been. So that really tells you if the method is working for you. And you'll see some quick feedback on that within about two to three weeks. You'll see if you're actually going in the right direction or continuing to have some same of the same problems, right, that caused you to go in the wrong direction. So we can really help you align to that right place where you can become more predictable and get better quality out of your services. Very good. And quick wins, low-hanging fruit, cherry picking, whatever you want to call it. Uh, yeah. It, it gets the it gets the buy-in and uh, and everybody motivated. It, that's awesome. So real quick, uh, a lot of folks are up against an agile requirement coming up. So let's let's see what's happening. I expect an agile requirement immediately. We know there's some folks out there because we asked that question coming in. Uh, Q3 2018, because we're almost there, folks, believe it or not, for fiscal year 2018 anyway. And Q4 2018, 2019, or not sure. Just let us know what you what you have cooking, and we'll make sure that we get uh, we get you what you need. Uh, and we'll give you another five. Four, you can do it. Three, you can do it. Two, one, and boom. So this is what this is what everybody's saying. There's some there's a lot of need out there. So thanks for thanks for responding to that. So we're all in this together. And one of the things we want to do is help you avoid the gotchas. So first things first, stop repeating what doesn't work. That sounds awfully, awfully easy, right? Stop doing what doesn't work. How hard is that one, Joey? Uh, it's actually really hard. It's hard to change habits. Let me tell you, that is the hardest thing in the world to do. Uh, but some of the Kanban method will actually start to illustrate that for you. And you go, oh, my goodness, I did uh -huh. it again. I did it again. I did it again. Did the yep. same thing again. Bang my head against the wall again and again. All right. And follow the USDS playbook. It really does work, doesn't it, fellas? Yeah. Yes, it does. Yeah, it does. It actually does help you focus more intently on providing good value and good service to your customers whether that's internal to your agency or external to your agency as the public uh, citizens go. And you can leverage the Agile uh, pilot, the P Kanban pilot for quick wins. That's that's a really good way to, one, understand if it works, how it would work in your organization. It doesn't cost a lot of money, and you can find out quickly and take advantage of the quick wins and find vendors that can manage and deliver on multiple flavors of Agile. How important is that, Mr. Williams? Oh, that is very important. Um, it, it's just very important. Uh, it works on top of all methodologies out there. If you can get the quick decisions and the buy-ins, and once you see it works for the first time, you would then want to have it more and more in your organization, and that's what it's all about. Yep. Uh, more for less. More for less. That's the key. So verify the pa past performance. You can also establish and use BPAs. If you're not familiar with BPAs or establishing those, uh, you can you can hit me offline and I will connect you with some of the, the contracting folks that do. Uh, faster access to talent, industry knowledge, and experience and expertise that you can get yourself uh, you can get yourself quickly with using BPAs. Real quick, a couple of bullet points for you uh, on the procurement methodologies for TriTech. You you mentioned this before, um, Randy, and you mentioned about small disadvantaged business, your hub zone. If you need some other connectivity, you run through partnerships with 8A, service disabled, woman owned, uh, and, and you can certainly run it through GSA. So uh, reach out to us. If you have some uh, a project, uh, you can reach out to TriTech and they can help you with that particular project. So with that, I'm going to leave us with one last question and then we'll get out of here. So you could use some help, help with meeting M1722 initiatives, a specific project. Uh, more information about TriTech or more information on the USDS playbook or something else, please contact me and we will make sure that it gets uh, submitted to the right person. So let's, uh, and this will be the final poll and then we'll make sure we get you out of here because we're running a couple of minutes over. Great questions and that, that was one of the reasons we ran over, which was awesome. And we'll give you five, four, three, two, and...
That's it. All right. Good deal. We will we'll get that. For everybody, just so you know, you will get a follow-up for the presentation. We just had somebody ask that question, as a matter of fact. Will the presentation be made available? Yes, you will get a copy of the presentation, as well as a Q&A and any other Q&As that come in. The supporting documents and links to all of the things that we talked about today. Remind me about that OMB 1313, right? Um, we'll make sure we get that in there. Um, Tri-Tech capabilities and procurement options and additional documentation that you ask for. And with that, we're going to say thank you for joining us. Uh, Randy, let's um, let's let them out of here in just a minute, but last comment. Okay, last comment is it works for all industries. It's worked in federal, commercial, and state. Uh, it's about innovation, research, and making your technology work no matter where it is. Mm-hmm. And that's what we stand by. We want your environment to do the same. Love it. Joey, final comments from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I'm jealous. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, enjoy the cold weather in Maryland. I'm kidding. Um, honestly, <laughs> the one thing I've learned with the Kanban method is people say, I have this, I have that. Will it do anything else for me? The answer is typically yes. It illustrates and highlights things that you don't realize. So if you're already using something like Scrum or Six Sigma or another kind of approach like feature driven development or disciplined agile uh, approaches like that, then yeah, it can actually highlight a few more things that will improve how you're doing them. The depth of that, the detail of that is something we'd be happy to show you. But typically, we can do it a little better, a little faster, and definitely a lot cheaper. Awesome. Well, we thank you guys for joining us. Thanks for the great insight and reviewing the Department of Labor. Always great to get real-life examples of success stories. And the fact that every single one of your clients are still with you says a lot. So thank you for for that. And thank you for everybody for joining us. We're going to let you go. And we'll see you next Gov Brief. And we really appreciate you guys, what you do, and joining us today. Thanks much.